Hello lovely people, welcome back to the farm at Free Warden. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the brutal truth regarding silver apple yard ducks and Bielefelder chickens. Stay tuned. Folks, when we started our farm, we wanted to get into ducks and chickens. I've always wanted to get into ducks. I remember being a little kid and thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could have not just chickens, which we did, but also ducks. However, ducks at that time were just as expensive as they are now compared to chickens. Pretty expensive. So, we had heard that the silver apple yards were, as far as dual purpose ducks, one of the highest egg layers and one of the best tasting meat birds. With that information, we decided to get a whole little flock of them and uh, we were not prepared for the amount of work that it takes to pluck a duck. If you've been watching our channel for a little while, you know that we're not afraid of hard work. We're not afraid of doing things a little outside the box. We're not afraid of getting our food the unconventional way, the way that most people don't think about. When you think about food, you think about where do you get it, the grocery store, the fast food joint, the, the restaurant. However, we were not prepared for the amount of work that it was to butcher a duck from start to finish, from kill cone, to plucker, to processing. It's a lot more work. It's a lot more difficult to pluck and process that duck compared to a chicken. And we've done hundreds and hundreds of chickens. So it's not like uh, we've got a problem with butchering or we've got a problem with plucking. The whole process with the ducks has been um, a good experience, but something that we're not planning on repeating. At least, here's the thing, we're not gonna continue raising the ducks for meat. We will continue raising them for eggs because we do have some customers who are interested in duck eggs. I've got the chickens behind me, so they're making a little bit of noise. So today, we saved back five females, five ducks, and one drake. That's the male duck. And we culled 19 ducks, male and female. Um, some of the smaller ones, a couple of larger ones too, but we wanted to call our numbers down to a manageable amount that we can just put out on pasture. They're gonna lay eggs for us and we will continue probably to hatch out some eggs as a, uh, an alternative feed source for our dogs. And, and maybe here and there, we'll pluck a duck and we'll eat it ourselves. But it's so much work uh, for the amount of meat that you get for the amount of good animal fat that you get that you can eat. It's just not worth it to us. And so that's a decision that everybody's gonna have to make. So as I share this information, keep in mind, this is our, this is our opinion. Uh, opinions may vary and experiences may vary, but based on what we've done over the last year plus, raising ducks has just not been worth it as a regular food source for us. So. After doing that for a year, I'm, I'm not excited about raising more ducks for our own consumption. A couple other things about ducks. Ducks are very noisy. Not as bad as, say, uh, guinea fowl. Their noise level is maybe a little lower than some other fowl on the farm that you might be able to have, but it's constant, it seems. They're always going around quacking, quacking, quacking. If you're around them, they're quacking. They are also very, very dirty. They waste a lot of feed. They make a big mess. They're dirty, they make their area dirty. They stink. I don't know what it is about the smell of their manure, but I don't mind chicken manure, and I don't mind goat manure. Even pig manure doesn't bother me as much as duck manure, so I don't know what it is about that. That's my personal opinion there. Uh, my personal taste, I guess, if you were, that's kind of gross, but if you want to put it that way, uh, if I had to smell any other type of manure, um, everything else here on the farm I'm fine with. Quail, chickens, geese, uh, pigs, sheep, rabbit. I'm fine with it all. Something about the duck manure, I don't like it. One of the other really big contributing factors to why we are not going to continue raising ducks, specifically silver apple yard ducks, is because 
their hanging weight, that is the weight that you, you come out with after they've been killed, plucked, processed, you've removed all the entrails, and now you've got a finished product that you can put in the oven, cook up, or, or roast, or grill, or smoke, and then set it on the table for dinner. It's just not enough for the amount of work. You know, some of these ducks, they weigh out like the largest carcass we've ever gotten from uh, butchering a single duck was not even three pounds. They've all been under three pounds, so. So we're gonna have 13 ducks left after our, our culling here uh, that we'll have on the farm, and those will be for egg laying. So we will continue to raise out ducks for meat for our dogs because plucking is really good for them. Uh, it's really good uh, brain exercise and it keeps them occupied and they enjoy it. And they get a really nice reward at the end. Um, it's just about, it's, it's the perfect thing for our dogs, uh, feeding them on the, the raw, the bar for the, the prey diet. Ducks are a little fattier, so I don't want it to be their main source of food. Uh, although when we butcher them a little younger like this, they don't quite have as much fat. We are looking at another breed of duck, specifically not one that's descended from the mallard, but actually the Muscovy. My brother has some Muscovies right now, and we would uh, like to see um, how he does with them and possibly get into Muscovies, uh, maybe yet this year, but if nothing else, then the next year. All right, let's talk about the pros and the cons of the Bielefelders. First of all, they are a very gentle, docile bird. They're a very nice bird. They're nice to other birds. Other birds tend to be nice to them. The roosters are even docile and gentle, more gentle. They're still a rooster. They still have testosterone. They could still attack you. And there have been a couple instances where they have come after us, but nothing terrible, nothing like they just won't stop until they've, until you're dead. I have been around roosters that are that way. It's you or them. When they're in their prime, they do lay plenty of eggs. Uh, they've laid several eggs a week for us. Uh, I'd say in their prime, each, each hen was laying five eggs a week or more, maybe even up to seven eggs a week. So they are a 250 plus egg uh, a day laying chicken in a year. Unfortunately for our purposes here, there are some cons that are deal breakers for us when it comes to Bielefelders, and not that we're going to get rid of all of our Bielefelders, but we're bringing in some other breeds because they're just not fulfilling our needs that we have here. So let me talk to you a little bit about that because you know maybe you're in the same situation that we were in when we started looking for chickens, and you're thinking the Bielefelders, they look wonderful, they look awesome. Well, I'm gonna give you the brutal hard truth about the Bielefelders right now, and it, uh, unfortunately it may not be what you wanna hear, but it might just be what you need to hear. It's what I needed to hear, and I couldn't find anybody else talking about the Bielefelders this way uh, in a video or online, so I'm gonna give it to you straight. I said that they lay eggs. They lay a lot of eggs in their prime. Unfortunately, their prime seems to be very short. We have them on some of the best feed. We have them on organic, non-soy. It's a high protein, high calcium layer feed uh, that I had specially made and mixed at a, uh, at a feed mill. They have access to grass seeds and alfalfa and clover and insects. They are living it up. They are living their best life. And uh, you know, that's the kind of life that we wanted to provide for our chickens because we figured that's gonna provide us the best eggs and the highest uh, output in eggs. We also don't force them to lay through the winter. So they got a break this winter and they, they didn't even start laying up until very late in the fall last year. Then they took a break over the winter and we did get a couple eggs here and there, but it was barely any, maybe uh, two eggs a day out of all the chickens. So we, we let them slow down and taper off with their egg laying over the winter. So having said all of that, you would expect that these chickens would be laying non-stop now. We're in the middle of summer. We just had the summer solstice. So the days are at their longest right now and their egg capacity or their egg laying has actually diminished and decreased considerably. These chickens are just over a year old. We have nine of them. 
and we're getting anywhere from three to maybe four eggs a day right now out of nine chickens. That's less than half. We should be getting like seven eggs a day. That's what we experienced earlier this year. We were getting, compared to the number of chickens we had, we were getting about 80% of that in eggs a day. Back when we had about 32 Bielefelder hens, we were getting 25 plus eggs a day. Now that we have nine, we're not getting five, six, seven eggs a day. We're getting maybe three or four eggs a day. So they seem to have diminished in their egg laying ability quite rapidly. And like I said, we have them on the best nutrition. Um, actually spoke to a dietitian about what they needed. So our egg quality and egg quantity, not only has the egg quantity diminished, but there's we've seen a noticeable decrease in the egg uh, quality. I don't know if this is all Bielefelders, if this is just our Bielefelders, but they've not stood the test of time that uh, we expected them to, they, they've not reached that standard that we've expected them to reach and maintain in order for them to continue living on our farm. We'll probably keep the Bielefelders around that we have now and retire them later, but we're certainly not gonna hatch out any more Bielefelders and we're not gonna buy any more Bielefelders which is kind of disappointing because we were thinking it wouldn't it wouldn't be half bad to be able to sell these guys. I'm not going to hatch out and sell a chicken to folks knowing that the quality of their egg laying diminishes rapidly and what should be, you know, they should be laying minimum 2 years but 3 4 years uh, the way that we're raising them, not forcing them to lay through the winter, and having them on a very rich and high nutrition diet. Now the other big deal breaker for us is the fact that they don't get as large as we were told that they would get. We were told that the roosters could grow out to be, you know, eight to ten plus pounds, and then you should expect to have, you know, five, six, maybe a five or six pound bird on your table. These guys just don't put on the weight like we thought they would. And, and even now that they're over a year old and they've eaten a lot of feed, they are not the uh, butcher ready bird that we were hoping they would be. So <clears throat> I think that the largest bird that we actually got after we processed them and everything, a minimum of 30 weeks we butchered our Bielefelder roosters and they were the largest one wasn't even four pounds, and many of them were smaller. These just aren't worth it for the amount of feed they eat, how long they take to mature, which is another con. They waste a lot of food as they're growing. It's just overall, it's not worth it for us for meat production. And now that their egg laying has decreased, it's not worth it for eggs. So unfortunately, they are, they're not all they're cracked up to be. They are, uh, they're a beautiful chicken, they're a nice chicken. They take a long time to grow out, minimum of 24 weeks. They take a long time to start laying, minimum of 24 weeks. They don't put on a lot of weight, and they don't lay a lot of eggs for a long time. So for us, regarding the Bielefelders, kind of like with uh, some of the same reasons with the ducks, we're not going to be getting any more Bielefelders, we're not going to be hatching any more out, and we certainly aren't going to be trying to sell them at point of lay or even chicks to people because it's just not worth it overall. Bielefelders are not really super cold hardy, so if you live in a colder region like us, you know, if you live in some of the northern states, you might not want to get the Bielefelders. They did make it through the winter, almost all of them. We lost one or two maybe at the most. So they did make it, but they got a lot of frostbite, some of them lost toenails. They had problems through the winter. Uh, just not the, the best bird to keep through the winter. At the end of the day, they get maybe a C minus in my book. Uh, it's just not something that uh, we're gonna continue doing. We're not gonna keep raising the Bielefelders. Uh, we'll keep the ones that we've got and we'll use them for eggs, for egg production until they uh, need to be retired and then we'll put them in a, in a stew pot. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that our experience can help 
other people avoid having the same or similar experiences. I'm not telling you don't get the Bielefelders, but just keep in mind these are the these are the facts. These are the the reality that we've uh, experienced, and it just might not be the bird that uh, you think it's all cracked up to be. Take that into consideration. You know, take it with a grain of salt. Do your do your own research. Look around. See what else you can find. Um, maybe you get Bielefelders and they're a better strain, better genetics. I, I, don't, I don't know what the problem is with ours. I'm not saying that ours are poor genetics. I'm just saying at the end of the day, we will probably never c even consider Bielefelders unless they were the last breed on earth, but they're not. So <laughs> we've got Dominiques now. We're going to uh, take the Dominiques through a whole year and then see if they are any better, if they're a better dual purpose bird for, for eggs and meat which we're hoping that they are. With that being said, I hope that this has been helpful and educational, and uh, we appreciate you watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell to get a notification the next time we upload a video. And if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate everybody watching. Stay safe, hug a buddy, God bless you. Everything's gonna be okay. Peace.